Hi everyone, yeah, just a quick uh, update. This is the first time I'm now using my uh, ZWO uh, ASI 1600 Pro uh, camera, my mono uh, cooled Pro camera. Um, let's see, I am cooling here at uh, minus 25 and it takes about 75% capacity of the adapter. And the first object I'm trying to shoot is the um, the Crescent Nebula and uh, also the surroundings of the Crescent Nebula because uh, I saw there was a lot of uh, nebulosity around the Crescent, uh, Crescent Nebula also. Um, so just a quick uh, here, a quick uh, video on what's going on. So I have this uh, sequence uh, running. So first I took two shots, uh, 120 seconds uh, exposure to see whether or not uh, I am actually target. Uh, I'm actually targeting the crescent uh, nebula, and that seems to be the case because when I stretch this picture, so this is I think the 120, um, 120 uh, uh, second picture, so the two minute picture. Uh, you see here the crescent uh, nebula, nice, and you see also some nebulosity uh, here. I'm trying to look at maybe a little bit brighter, um, and also when I zoom in. I think the stars are okay, and I have an Apo uh, camera, so I'm also looking on, uh, on uh, like in the edges whether or not I see some star trails. And there is a little bit of star trailing, but it's not a lot. So I'm happy with this actually, and this is uh, some nice nebulosity, I think. And so you see the two minute, um, the two minute uh, uh, image looks. I think nice, um, especially always also with the cooling. There's not there is of course noise. It's a CMOS camera, but not a lot of noise. Um, so I'm I decided to continue with five minute exposures actually, and let's see. The first one was in. Is that this one? I think it is. So you see here, yeah, you see a little. I'm having doubts a little bit because now the stars are pretty blown out. Maybe I can also. Uh, I'm planning like uh, this sequence uh, H alpha. Uh, I will shoot for one hour the H alpha part, and then for half an hour I will also shoot the uh, sulfur, and uh, for half an hour the oxygen, and then uh, I think I will just repeat this uh, process uh, through the night, and then see uh, what I come up with. Uh, hi folks, so just a quick uh, video. I noticed that I had this uh, wobbling of the uh, the deck um, axis actually and um, This is just uh, often a trick I use or it's not a trick But just to want to update you in PhD you have the option It's also always set on auto so auto means that it will correct uh, in, in, in the both ways like uh, when it's too far up or when it's too far down it corrects and then I noticed I have this uh, seen this uh, more times that uh, especially when uh, now I'm I'm uh, imaging uh, like the zenith, so my telescope is always how do you say that um, uh, vertical. Um, so when I notice this kind of pattern, then the picture is terrible, of course. And uh, what I do is just I try to see what kind of. Um, like uh, what kind of trend I'm seeing and most of the time it's either a, a slightly up or slightly down with deck and then I only correct for um, for the pattern that uh, for instance that it goes okay for instance it now corrects only when it goes down and it will not so it's north and um, it will not correct uh, for um, when the deck is a little bit up and I noticed that then you see here already that it is uh, far better now um, of course, we will see now that something will happen. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, I, it's, sometimes it seems to work. Uh, well, let's see how this works out. Maybe you see it hanging a little bit. Well, I I don't know if this is uh, useful to you, but I just wanted to share that uh, uh, information. So now I hope the trend will will be down. You see here, and now actually it is not correcting for it, so just waiting a little bit. And here we are again. Now it's here you know, back to where it should be. Um, so yeah, that's it. I just wanted to share that uh, little thing with you. So I hope that is useful, uh, useful information.
Uh, hi folks, I just wanted to uh, let you know how it turned out. Um, so I was able to take a lot of uh, images actually. So um, as for the S2, I have uh, taken, let's see, um, 16 uh, light uh, images. Oh, I'm sorry, this is in Dutch, but uh, you have to trust me. It's uh, like 16 uh, 300 second uh, images um, using the sulfur uh, the sulfur filter and also let's see I have taken 16 uh, also 16 uh, uh, images using using the uh, oxygen filter and then uh, finally the H alpha I tried to take twice as much and I ended up with let's see 36 uh, light images 36 so in total I've used let's see if I can count I cannot count so I will just check it uh, 68 light uh, light frames so I think for one night that was pretty good and of course what I also did was um, so I took some flats for each of the filters. So I have the sulfur flats, about 20 flats for sulfur, 20 flats for oxygen, and 20 flats, uh, flat frames for uh, H-alpha. And also here you see my darks, but I am still building my dark library. So I have 15 uh, images of uh, darks. And by the way, all of the, uh, the images were 300 seconds. So my darks are also 300 seconds um, at minus 25 degrees. And I have uh, I think 30 or 40, I think 30 bias frames. Um, so that is the uh, the stuff I ended up with uh, yesterday. I wanted to share some uh, results. So I I stacked them using Deep Sky Stacker and also I processed them um, some more in Photoshop. And uh, just to give you an idea of what I came up with. Um, so this is the H alpha file after uh, stacking. Oh, let's see. Uh, so the H alpha file already shows a lot of like nebulosity and it also clearly shows the crescent uh, nebula so that, that was pretty good um, when looking at the O3 I will put that here maybe next to the one oh, maybe not <laughs> I hope you can see this so the O3 you see it had a lot less uh, details so it showed still a little bit of the uh, crescent nebula, but uh, the, you could not really distinguish the nebulosity here. And then the last one was the sulfur. So the sulfur, that showed even, it, it, it showed the stars, but it did not really show. Yeah, you see some, actually, you can see some, some nebulosity here. And also at the very edge, you see some uh, details of the crescent uh, nebula. Uh, so what I did, I uh, put all of that together uh, using uh, Photoshop, and yeah, I came up. And then you can you can do a lot of stuff. But this is actually what I came up with uh, after one night of uh, imaging. Um, so yeah, here we have the crescent nebula, and we have I think a lot of uh, nice nebulosity. So I used the red for the H alpha. Um, green was uh, I put all of the sulfur information in and for blue I put all of the oxygen information in and then also I experimented a little bit with an extra layer of luminosity uh, using the H alpha uh, the H alpha um, data again and then I ended up with this and actually I have to say I am really new at uh, processing all of these uh, these images and also uh, yeah, stacking them and uh, putting them together, uh, combining the, all of the, the mono filters in one uh, color image. So uh, this is for me uh, first um, first trial, and uh, I think yeah I really uh, I'm really happy with uh, actually uh, what the camera has produced. So now I uh, the only thing I have to do is improve my skills a little bit, and uh, yeah then we will. Uh, we'll be able to, uh, to process this even better. But anyway, I um, yeah, want to share you uh, this, these pictures so you have some idea of what you can expect when, uh, when working with uh, a ZWO uh, ASI 1600 Pro camera. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, see you later.